Or at least I think. It's going on a long freaking time. My voice is really starting to hurt here, people. I have not talked for this long in my life. Also, I'm starting to run out of things to say because I'm getting very, very sleepy. Uh, okay, well, I mean, that's nice and all, but I don't know if that sounds like a smart idea. Is the ship ready? Not yet, sir. I went through that. Didn't really say anything quickly. Okay. So they're not going to kill people, they're just going to go help them. Which is good, which is, you know, what the army should be doing. Should be helping. Hey, there you two are. Damn straight, Theodore. Follow your commander's wishes and stuff. Awesome. So that's what he had. That's the materials he was talking about. Hill Baron. Once again, we're back to one more moon. I don't think the moon ever goes away. I think Goldblades just stays up there, personally. The Lunarians probably just wait out their years, and in the end, eventually they come down and join the rest of the people. But anyways, that's Final Fantasy IV, the after years. As curtains come to a draw, we watch our cast. Cecil and Rose, who obviously live happily ever after in Baron, Ruling justly and taking care of the world. Sid, as always, though short life, lives out his time. Building more airships and stuff for helping mankind. Luca, Galka, and Brianna? I don't know what the two dolls do, but Luca helps Sid and becomes the new engineer of the world. Creating new inventions to make uh, everything better and stuff, like coffee blenders. No, wait, I mean coffee machines. Ashura and Leviathan, as always, watch over the Fame Arch and act as Rydia's foster parents and grandparents to our little Curio. Curori. As Ridio adopts the little girl, living out her life as a mother and understanding love of a child. Fortunately, Edge gets screwed and he gets no loving. I'm assuming eventually Edge and Ridia got married, they just don't say it. Or maybe they're saving it for something. Hey guys! There they are in their disguises. This is the Eblin 4 and they continue their, they continue their days watching over Eblin. Young and Ursula continue their training, and Ursula grows to be a fine young woman with the help of Sheila to take over Fabul, while Young spends his days in retirement in the mountains of Hob with Sheila beating the crap out of everything. Just enjoying peaceful times. I always figured that uh, Ursula and Theodore got married. That would be a pretty good combination. We got sales and marketing. Shuri Hogo goes off to become in sales and marketing. Whatever. Who's the next character? Come on, let's do this. Alan Purim continue to rule. Well, not rule, but continue to watch over Mysidia with their light and dark powers, ruling in jest. Though Purim, Palum continues to hide his feelings for Lenora, Leonora for through his bashfulness. As Lenora continues to calmly and quietly stay by his side, ever tolerating him. Come on. Steve Ross? Bob Ross. Steve Ross, meet Bob Ross. You two will get along great. I wonder if that's his brother. Probably not. Edward and Harley probably eventually get married and rule Dan Kane together. With the permission of Tella and Anna, of course. And they have a weird, freaky child that has... I don't know. Blue and yellow hair? I don't know if that would mix too well. 
should probably dyes it. Square Enix Limited. I know we still have more characters, but we haven't seen everybody, have we? Anyways, this is a great game. Good, well, I can't say much. The music's all the same. A little remastered. Uh, battle systems much more. Battle systems much more improved, and the quality and the different number of characters and parties combinations make this great game a little more enjoyable and a little more thought-provoking to play than uh, the first one there. So yeah, it's a pretty good game. Uh, chapter system wasn't too bad. Uh, the fact that you couldn't go back to place as well wasn't really a big deal, I guess. Really good story development and across the histories. Uh, Golbez continues to live on Lunaria where he watches over the Lunarians and once in a while gets to sleep. Thankfully he's able to wake up in the middle of the night, get a sandwich, go pee without getting disrupted. And Fusoya turns his back to the world because we don't know what actually happened to him and we're not going to say. We're going to leave it up to you, the gamer, to figure out that he either died or lived. And Kane continues to f accept his light and dark side and runs captain of whatever. Theodore continues on the line of Baron Knight before marrying Ursula and becoming king of Baron slash Fabul. Baron, that's what they should call it. So yeah, it's really this is a really good game. Everything's gameplay's good, story's good. Um, they do a really good they do a really good Chrono Cross dump on you with the story at the end there, really building up the world. So that is the end. As always. A few things about the uh, biggest problem with the game is some party members can be kind. They don't. They're not the most useful. Like Harley, if her piercing sights worked a little better and told you what weakness gave the enemy, she'd be a lot more useful. Uh, Calcon and Brianna, they're more there for novelty, and I guess you want to trouble. But anyways, folks, I'm going to end it here and let the uh, credits roll out for the next little while. Thank you guys for watching this LP. It's a really good game. Check it out. Bye now.